In the last 10 years, Snack has provided fighter training stack supplements to more than 20 world champions, including Mikey Garcia, Demetrius Andrade, and Caleb Plant. If you're ready to take your fight game to the next level, the Snack Fighter Training Stack is for you. Um, Canelo Alvarez is fighting Sergey Kovalev. He now enters your fighter's division. And if he beats Kovalev, he will be a title holder, and, and that's an option. What do you make of Canelo fighting Kovalev? I'm not thinking about it because we only have one thing in our mind. Better be of. That's enough. That's enough. It's a handful. That's enough. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, listen, Kovalev's getting a little long in the tooth. He's got one foot in the shadows. Uh, he's coming off a tough fight. And uh, he's probably taking this fight quicker than you would want to take a fight after a tough fight. But when they pay you right to do it, you, you make a decision, right? It's a business. Obviously, you know, uh, nobody uh, put a gun to their head to take the fight this fast to Kovalev's head. They put a lot of money in front of him to do it. And, you know, he... Kovalev showed a lot of heart in his last fight. You know, he, he showed a lot of heart to come back uh, and get that win. And it's paying off for him now. He's going to, with this big fight, um, one of the fights you hope you can get when you're in this business. Uh, a career changing, a life changing, a retirement, if you want to look at it that way, type fight. Um, so. God bless him that he can get that. And his manager, who's also our manager, you know, Agus, uh, we're happy for him that he can get it. And I would, again, he earned it by the way he behaved that night in Russia. But I think you look at light heavyweight, you, obviously the zone, it was a business move. You know, it's not an accident. It has to be on that date. It's got to be during a billing cycle. You know, let's move the curtains back a little bit and see the wizard. If you're gonna ask, right? You know, I know you guys aren't used to hearing those type things, uh, but the, the zone has laid out a lot of money, and um, not only to Canelo but to a few other people. And they need their fights haven't all been marquee fights recently with some of the some of their stars, and they need, you know, they needed that rematch with with uh, Ruiz and, and Joshua, they got it. That's December. They needed something before that to, f to fill the billing cycle, to fill the card before the year ended, uh, to make their you know, subscribers happy, and to make the board at the zone happy. And they, they got it. So I'll tell you one thing, I told someone else this. I wish I was the manager of Kovalev for that negotiation. You had a lot of leverage. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot of leverage, baby. You had nothing to do with right hands. But, nope. No, but, you know, God bless them. And uh, they earn it. They earn it by the, the risk they take to get into that difficult place. They earn it. Every one of them earn it. I want them all to break the bank. Every fighter in the world, break the bank. Um, because what you do is tough and dangerous sometimes, always possible. And so they're gonna, you see the fight, but I, I don't look at it, I mean the marquee of it is, oh you got a light heavyweight, you got him moving up to a light heavyweight, you got Canelo moving up again. Yeah, that's what they're gonna sell, and plus Canelo, uh, Kovalev coming off a great fight, you're gonna sell that, and listen, uh, Canelo is the, uh, He's the king of boxing. He, you know, he like Babe Ruth. He, he's the Sultan of Swat. You know, he he's the Bambino. He's the guy that sells, you know, pay per view and subscribers. He's got that great Latino following, and you you go and put him in now in a thing that's going to get people's attention. But what they're going to forget about for a minute is that, yeah, he's moving up to light heavyweight, but again, with a light heavyweight guy who once was maybe the best light heavyweight in the world, you know, before somebody named Ward came along uh, and, and, and changed that. But you got a light heavyweight who is long in the tooth. you got a light heavyweight who is coming off a very difficult fight. A light heavyweight who, you know, is showing uh, some, some diminishment. I think that's fair to say. Right? Vulnerabilities, especially to the body. It's diminishing. Yeah. It's diminishing. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and you got Canelo who's younger and who's, you know, actually 
one of the things I love about Canelo is, and his people, that he's actually improved. He's actually shown some improvement in some of his big fights in the last year. You know, which which is pretty. You don't always see that. You see a stagnation. You see a guy get to a certain point and he stays there. You don't always see a guy improving like that. But uh, he has. I like Canelo in a fight. I, I, I don't know if it's going to be the sensational fight they're going to build it for. I don't. I don't. But, again, they earned it. They earned their money. Uh, they put themselves in position. And, uh, you know, that, that guy over there running things at the zone, you know, he might not be getting punched in the face, but his seat is hot. <laughs> his seat is hot. He, you can feel heat different ways. Doesn't always have to be from punches. And they, they, were, they needed to make this fight. They need to, uh, to take care of business. The only thing that I think about with that fight is Kovalev has a, a very excellent jab. And Canelo, over the years, had a little bit difficulty with guys that could jab really well. Does it matter? I thought that Golovkin jabbed, jabbed him all night long in his last fight, and he still didn't get it. So I think when you fight Canelo, um, jabs don't count. It could be with the Golovkin fight. You are right. But Mayweather jabbed him. It did really well. It gave him troubles uh, in that fight. You know, Mayweather? yeah. Uh, which fight? When Mayweather fought Canelo. Oh, and outclassed him. It's just overall, just different level at, at that point. And even now, he'd probably still be at a different yeah, yeah, level. Listen, Mayweather, I think. Yeah, it, but the, the jab confounded Canelo a lot. But I think there was more than just a jab that Mr. Mayweather brought yeah, to the yeah, dance. Yeah, Please. Different level. But he has difficulty with fighters that have excellent jabs. Not even comparing fruit. I mean, you're, you're in the vegetable garden variety now. Please. <laughs> Please. Not even apples and oranges. You're talking about apples and zucchini. <laughs> I mean, come on. You're going to bring Mayweather in there? Well, I'm bringing the fact about, about the, how the jab has... There's a lot of other things that Mayweather brought to confound Canelo besides the jab, like quick feet. You know, Canelo's hands were fast enough, they were one, so his feet weren't quick enough to close the gaps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Mayweather brought that elusiveness, you know. How'd you like to fight Casper the Ghost? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't feel too good. No. I mean, that's a tough comparison, but I get what you're trying to say, that, uh, but that jab was coming from a, from a guy who's pretty special in a lot more areas than just the jabbing department, Mr. Mayweather. You're pretty special. You're pretty special. So, um, but again, uh, I don't know that it's the jab that you're describing when you say about Kovalev and you're projecting the possibilities of difficult fights. Well, his jab's a power jab, and if he keeps his distance... It was five years ago. The jab that you're, in your mind, you, you remember that jab with, with the fighters he was fighting when he was having success. I don't know that that jab is quite, I didn't see it. As potent as it was. It's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. And um, it wasn't the same in that eighth round when he was in there with Mr. Yardley, you know. I think it was the eighth round. Um, when Mr. Yardley didn't have trouble getting past it. It wasn't consistent. It wasn't, it wasn't still there in the late stages of the fight, I guess is what I'm saying. It, it dissipated. It, it went away. Well, he ended up knocking him out, though, but he was tired but he at was that point. In that yeah. one round. He, he was spent at that point. He was in trouble. Yeah. But but uh, he survived it. You know, Yardley was spent, yeah, but but you wouldn't have you wouldn't have ran to the you wouldn't have been running to the to the uh, casino windows trying to bet on Kovalev in that eighth round. Yeah. And No, you would have you would have thought, gee, he ain't gonna make it. But his heart came true, and he did. But I just don't see the same. I don't see the same things that Kovalev brought to the dance a few years ago. I don't. I don't see them there. I don't see them there on a consistent level, the way you used to see them. You think Canelo sticks around? Maybe fights well, your I, guy. I'm saying Kovalev when no, I say. No, I mean Can Canelo. Do you think Canelo sticks around, or do you think they're specifically they see that? Kovalev is diminishing, he has trouble with body shots, and that's why they're picking him. You know what? This is how I'm going to answer that. I hope things go the way that obviously we want them to go on October 18th, so you can ask me that question then. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what I hope. All right.